All right, so another video on cyber threat hunting. In today's series, we are going to be looking for initial access brokers or IABs, which compromise network access and sell that to other people. Now, I have three knowledge challenges or flags in order to successfully conclude today's video. Overall, my goal is to figure out the prices being sold for initial access, as well as what kind of access is being sold. Uh, there will be timestamps in the description below for my three knowledge challenges or flags. But first, let's just quickly overview what an IAB is and what they do. So IABs are threat actors which sell access to compromised networks to other cyber criminals. These threat actors are typically highly skilled in probing for and exploiting access. And once they have a foothold in a network, they'll offer their services and their level of access to other cyber criminals within underground forums, telegram channels, and any other medium of communication. Threat actors do this for a few reasons. One may be that they want a quick turnaround on the access that they've gained within a network. Uh, others don't want to have the desire or leverage to compromise or further escalate their privileges or impact in that network. They don't want to leave a footprint. Um, so typically they'll sell this access to other cyber criminals where their responsibility is on them to do whatever they desire to do. Now, IABs are typically leveraged by ransomware groups and other cyber criminals who will access the networks and deploy ransomware variants on those networks in order to blackmail victims into paying up. In terms of the prices offered for this access, uh, these threat actors will demand a certain amount depending on the level of access and the type of access they have in a network. There's different types of levels of access, of course. You have admin or low-level privileges. Now, typically, initial access brokers will sell compromised credentials for RDP, uh, Active Directory accounts, VPN accounts, SSH server, or uh, just general server credentials, web access credentials, uh, access to remote management tools, and of course, many more user or just general accounts. Now, for my video, I have three knowledge challenges or flags that I must look for uh, in order to complete my investigation. Let's go ahead and transition onto the search, first by looking at the tool that I am leveraging to gather this information. So in order to find or achieve my knowledge challenges or flags in today's series, I'm going to be leveraging Flare. Now, this is a platform that you may recognize from my previous videos within this series. Flare is a threat intelligence and threat exposure management platform which continuously scans the open internet, underground web market forums, telegram channels, and various chat uh, applications, as well as lookalike domains and open credentials or leak credentials. On the back end of Flare here, I can type in a keyword which will show various types of events related to that specific uh, character or keyword. So for example, let's look at VPN accounts. Similar to how a Google search will work, there's going to be events that are outputted by a date which show the word VPN account or something similar to that. Now, what's really cool about Flare is that you can go to the filters tab and you can navigate more granular levels of control. So you can turn off the open internet, for example, and only look at the underground or dark web marketplaces or various chat forms such as Telegram channels, something that I've done in my previous video series. On the left hand side here, you're going to see the identifiers tab. Identifiers are used to track specific assets or criterias of key words. You can go up to the top with create identifier and you can specify a type by domain, keyword, IP address, username, password, whatever you want. As you can tell here, I have three identifiers set up currently. One of them relates to my actual uh, search criteria or knowledge object, which is going to be the RDP credentials. Going to the left on the dashboard side here, Flare sets up a tenant uh, which represents a brand or business. So my brand in my tenant is cyberacademy.org. And as you can see here, this is the default 
dashboard view. So I receive an overview of the various types of exposure profiles and the attributes that go along with this. And you can see which levels uh, are more exposed than others. So you can see here the various attributes or elements that are exposed right now uh, for my tenant. The yellow represents the industry average and the purple blue represents my exact tenant. So specifically cyberacademy.org has the most exposure under the left side or criminal underground marketplaces. So in today's video, I will be leveraging events as well as identifiers, which will help me look for various underground market forums or telegram channels for my knowledge flags. And over the course of the next week, I'm gonna be searching through Flare and seeing what I can find for my three challenges. So on to flag one, which is RDP access. Let's see what I can find and how much cyber criminals or threat actors are selling it for. I figured RDP server credentials would be relatively easy to find. I launched my search on Flare using RDP credentials as my identifier to highlight any keywords related to RDP. I found a few forum posts related to selling RDP creds uh, one really cool feature of Flare is that you can actually go and see the screenshots attached from Telegram channels. So as you can see here, it appears that threat actors attach screenshots of bank accounts as proof to show how much money is in the account. I reached out to a couple of threat actors inquiring about the type of RDP access being sold and how much it would be, and I encountered a few individuals. The first individual was selling access to multiple hijacked bank accounts of businesses and individuals. In addition to bank account information, the threat actor claimed to have RDP access, email access, cookies, and versions all included. So after exchanging formalities and inquiring what type of access this individual had, like what kind of RDP access, he offered to sell me the device or access for $950 after $900 on my end. Now, the bank account that I had bid it on had close to $160,000 in it. So why would someone sell access to an account that has 160 times more money in it? Well, there's a challenge when it comes to laundering money and siphoning this money from the bank account. So oftentimes, money mules are needed. And in this use case for this initial access broker, it's rather easy to sell than leverage this access and go through all of those challenges. Now, my next vendor was selling access to a corporate RDP server for $200, and this was what I was looking for. They didn't expand on where this device resided in the corporate network, and they wanted BTC as payment up front, so I just decided to mess with them. I said I would pay $250 in Dogecoin. They agreed. I sent an Elon picture and was on my way. So on average, I saw the prices for RDP accounts range from $200 to $1,500, depending on the type of access and where it was being sold. Finding corporate VPN credentials was relatively straightforward after knowing what to query. So conducting an initial search on Flare, I found a lot of Telegram channels and forum postings selling commercial premium VPN account access, such as accessing premium accounts on ExpressVPN or NordVPN. After conducting some initial searches for business or corporate VPN, I found a couple of forum postings which led me to forums which were no longer accessible. Uh, there was one on Dread mentioning access to VPN companies, but no details were provided. With little luck here, I decided to reach out to the Flare associate who told me that IABs will list their VPN access account type, usually in order of company, country, the USA, revenue, access type, and price. So using the keyword access type colon VPN, I was actually able to find several forum postings listing corporate VPNs for sale. Uh, this included a forum post on Procard, which listed multiple companies by the revenue and access type, and each of these was selling for $500 each. There were several listings on exploit.is. One vendor was selling company access for $1,800 each and even listed the access types such as domain admin or domain user and the type of antivirus being used within that company. And finally, the most interesting was one vendor offering access to one of the top five auto manufacturers for $15,000. So the price range varied for corporate VPN accounts anywhere from $500 to $15,000. Finding hacked business emails was surprisingly the most interesting flag for me personally due to the encounter with one threat actor providing pastebin links for these hacked accounts. So once again, start off my search on Flare with the identifier business email compromise. And after some initial investigation, I discovered a post on crimemarket.is with a threat actor going by Ronnie King. This threat actor was selling a repository of hacked corporate databases. 
What made this quite interesting is specifically the use of paste spin links, which provided access to a list of company databases, along with imager screenshots for evidence of all of the hacked corporate emails for particular vendors. The imager screenshots had watermarks of the threat actor's telegram, so I decided to reach out and inquire about the email list. After chatting with this individual, I told him I was interested in purchasing one of the lists with a set of email plus hashes since there were no clear text passwords available. Most of these lists didn't come with passwords or their corresponding hashes, meaning that they were offering company emails and some other internal identifiers. As with other threat actors I've encountered, I had to name a price first, so I highballed with $500 and this individual came back to uh, say, hey, I have 1,200 records with passwords and hashes and I'll offer you $500 for them. Uh, so I would have to crack the hashes on my end. This price seems rather high for only 1,200 records protected with hashes only, not clear text passwords. But for $500, I could actually buy an entire list of thousands of corporate emails where I could send phishing links to try to lure victims and conduct other further BEC or business email compromise scamming schemes. So with these pastebin links and password lists, I have, I guess, successfully completed flag three, which was finding business email accounts for sale. So learning about the various levels of access sold on underground markets is quite interesting. Over this past week, I've learned that cyber criminals are willing to be on either end of the transaction, whether they're selling or buying access to networks, specifically for individuals who are unskilled uh, leveraging IABs may be a possible way to gain access and deploy their commoditized malware or ransomware variants. So uh, special thanks to Flare for sponsoring today's video and this series of cyber threat hunting. And uh, well, yeah, hopefully you've learned something new and until the next time, have a good day.